Oxford, Michigan is one of those places that is often swept under the rug. Well, you'd never guess what's under that rug. So you're someone that's possibly looking to move to Oxford, Michigan, or you just want to see what life is like there. Well, I'm going to fill you in on the good, bad, and ugly, and I highly suggest you stick around to the end. It gets pretty interesting. For those of you that don't know, Oxford, Michigan is a village that is located on the northeast end of Oakland County, just north of Lake Orion, which I made a video about that I will link in the description, if you're interested, of course. The village of Oxford is 1.46 square miles in size with a population of just under 3,500 people. I know what you're thinking, that's a pretty tiny place. How can I thread myself into that community? And I hear you, but there's also Oxford Charter Township, which surrounds the village as most townships in Michigan tend to do. It is 35.2 square miles in size with a population of just under 23,000 people. This community, similar to Lake Orion, tends to be an underdog in Southeast Michigan because it's north of all that hustle and bustle we are used to as Metro Detroiters. It's funny actually, as a realtor who is all over the state of Michigan, this area in particular wasn't really a priority for people in my experience until just a few years ago after the pandemic. And there's a reason for that and I'll mention later, but let's just say it's getting more and more popular by the day. To kick off the list of good, bad, and ugly stuff, I'll knock out the good first. Just as I mentioned, people just took more interest in this region post-pandemic because you can be in the outskirts, away from all the noise, and just live in a small, medium town, but still have a somewhat reasonable commute, kinda. What's cool about Oxford is when we think of a small town, we think sometimes we think of this neglected, beat up little town that doesn't always have the resources to maintain what it has. And Oxford is so far beyond that stereotype. I went there not too long ago and explored and I thought, do people know this gem is over here? I mean, it's out here, but still, it may be far-fetched to say that this is a small town because there are four lanes going in and out of the downtown, but hey, the village is only over one square mile in size, so that's pretty small. It's a very clean town. All their storefronts are aged to perfection historically and incredibly well-maintained. The next wonderful thing about Oxford are the things to do in the offerings, which may seem as a surprise to you, honestly. There's the little movie theater on Washington Street. There's so many events that happen in this little town, such as Wind Down Wednesdays, the car cruise, summer markets, summer concert series, Toss and Tuesdays for the Cornhole League. There's the Downtown Trolley Express where you can hop on and get to and from Oxford and Lake Orion to take advantage of everything both these communities have to offer. This is a cool offering because a lot of my videos about communities throughout Metro Detroit don't have simple public transport where you can actually track its location and hop on and off wherever. Then as far as restaurants and other offerings, there's Golden Dragon, Oxford Tap, Homegrown Brewing Company, Grav Cap Brewing, Victoria's Bistro, Red Naps American Grill, which I have made a visit to and I highly recommend, 24th Street Sports Tavern, Evergreen's Coffee and Bake Shop, Casa Real, Mero Mero, if I'm saying that correctly, My Kebab Mediterranean, and so many more options with, of course, there's the golf clubs as well. And as you could tell from that list I named off, I wasn't saying the large franchises like McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, etc. The area has those options, of course, but it's more so jam-packed full of local businesses. So no matter what door you step in, you truly are supporting local. And it's just awesome to see the community do just that. And with offerings in mind, you have Oxford Public Schools. They're not the top ranked schools in Metro Detroit, but they are ranked number 26 best school districts in the Detroit area number 88 of 580 best school districts in Michigan, and number 202 of 557 districts with the best teachers in Michigan, according to niche.com. Okay, so there's the plentiful restaurant offerings, a cool downtown, public transportation, but something else a lot of people don't know about is Oxford Township has around 50 lakes and four parks that range from half an acre all the way up to 300 acres. So outside of shopping and eating until you can't move anymore, at all the local businesses, you can hop on one of the nearby lakes and do the water sports while also venturing into one of their four parks to do some hiking, biking, and nature stalking. Again, there's a reason I called this place a gem when I started this rant because it doesn't just have the bare minimum. There's options that cater to anyone, truly. And I saved this pro for last because I truly believe that this is the number one thing that makes Oxford, Michigan so, so, so special 
and that's the community. It's not just the amazing downtown, the events, and the local businesses. If you make your way downtown, you'll come across a mural that pays tribute to the families and the community of Oxford on the loss of four lives and others injured during a mass shooting that occurred in 2021. It's beyond devastating what happened to the community and despite that situation tearing them down they have come so much closer together as a community and it's something you feel as soon as you step foot in the town see the mural and just see the whole community as a whole it's it's not something you forget and will always be a part of oxford's roots when i decided to make this video on Oxford that has really been really a long time coming, I wanted to not only shed light on this situation, but make a point to give some well-rounded insight into what makes this little town such a wonderful place to visit, live, and call your own. And I truly hope I conveyed that to you as someone who is watching, listening, or reading. Now, I, I wanna transition a little bit into the cons of living in Oxford, and for starters, I'd have to say the traffic. I have been preaching about this little small town and I don't want to give you that false impression that it's a one horse tumbleweed town that you can drive for miles without hitting a red light. Similar to Lake Orion, there's Lapeer Road or M24 that cuts right through the area. Well, it tends to be people's primary commute source in, out, and through the community and the town, despite having two lanes going in each direction and some street parking too, it can feel a little clogged up from time to time. It's not the worst in comparison to other communities throughout Metro Detroit, but it can still cause that vein in your forehead, if you know what I'm saying. During rush hour, it could take 15 to 20 minutes to travel four to six miles from the south side of Oxford to the north side. Some of you there in, in larger metro areas might be thinking, Psh, that's it, I travel a mile an hour. Well, we, we really don't have anything to complain about, do we? The next con that I will touch on briefly that most people don't think about when moving to a new community and that's the grocery stores. Oxford, Michigan pretty much has a mire for a grocery store, which isn't ideal when looking for specialty items like you Whole Foods, Aldi, Costco loving people out there. Where the options are limited also means there can be some heavier traffic in there from time to time. So I'd assume maybe the visits there may be fairly strategic for people who live in and around the area. This is just me nitpicking to the, at this point because you could just venture to Lake Orion a few minutes down the street and go to Kroger, Meyer, Lucky's Natural Food and other convenience stores as well. So that kind of can be pretty swept aside as long as you're willing to tack on some commute time. The last kind I want to touch on that I've been hinting at throughout this whole overview is the location. I know, I know, I say a location in Metro Detroit is never bad and it just has to be a con because it's just, it's, it's pretty far out there. It's one of the bigger complaints, especially if you're someone who likes to take advantage of all the attractions that Metro Detroit has to offer and a friend invites you to Detroit, you'll be like, okay, see you in an hour or 12 Oaks Mall in Novi being an hour and 15 minutes away. So it's something a lot of people don't think about and it's based highly on preference, of course, because for me, I wouldn't mind the area if I was just sticking around the Oxford and Lake Orion and just getting what they had to offer, occasionally going to a Red Wings game or a Tigers game or having a shopping day at one of the malls. But before I wrap this up, I want to make sure I touch on good old real estate to give you an insight into Oxford's home prices, as well as the range in housing available for everyone. Take a look at this graph. It shows the average sale price over the last three years with Oxford Township in blue, Oxford Village in green, Lake Orion Village in yellow, and Orion Township in red. I wanted to include Lake Orion and surrounding townships just to give you a sense of how the prices differ. And as you can see, they range from $320,000 and some change to over $450,000. And within all these areas, the average price has increased 3.1 to 8.8% as well. As of recording this, there are 45 homes for sale in the village of Oxford and the township of Oxford, ranging from a $32,000 to a $59,000 mobile home in one of their mobile home park communities to the lower on the end single family home of $225,000 with three bedrooms, one bathroom, over 1,550 square feet, situated on 1.5 acres and built in 1940. It's a little updated and inside and has the ability to be financed using a USDA loan or what is known as rural development. A lot of areas have the ability to have this financing, but it's nice to see a home where it's actually offered. So that's a, that's a good cheap option in 
Oxford. But then we jump up to a $2.85 million home on Whisper Lake with 366 feet of water frontage, five bedrooms, five and a half bathrooms, 6,482 total square feet, situated on 13.31 acres and built in 2020. This is just one of those homes where pictures couldn't possibly do it justice. So is Oxford, Michigan a place you live? Why or why not? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you're thinking about moving to Michigan in one day or a million, feel free to reach out anytime. I also have a link to the Living in Michigan newsletter to give you insight in all things Michigan from yours truly. So be sure to subscribe so you never miss out. Thanks for watching. Until next time.